Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic follows a ragtag group of heroes on their epic journey to find fragments of magic star maps scattered throughout the galaxy that would lead them to the Star Forge, a powerful device that must be destroyed to keep the Sith from taking control. But what if you had no friends and had to go on this perilous quest alone and without help? Can you beat Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic using only the main character? This challenge has been a long time in the making, since October of 2021 actually. Unfortunately, that footage has been lost, and I didn't decide to restart the challenge until now. Let's go over the rules. 1. I can only use the main character to attack enemies, hack terminals, and repair droids. There are a few exceptions, like towards the middle of the game I am forced to play as another character for 10-ish minutes, but I'm cool with it since it's just for the story. There are also times when I have to take other characters with me. When this happens, I strip them of their weapons and armor and make them wait somewhere far away until I'm done with that area. If by chance they do manage to start fighting someone, they do almost no damage and end up immediately dying, so I was okay with it the very few times it happened. I'm talking like 1-2 damage a hit on enemies with 160 health. Amazingly, you can do most of this game without having any other party members. I also didn't level up any of the party members, with the exception of the one I had to play as for 10 minutes later on. 2. Not sure why I decided to do this, but I am not allowed to use damaging force powers or any other weapons aside from blaster pistols, grenades, and mines. I can also utilize droids I've repaired to help me as well since they aren't actually a party member. Support force powers are fine though. It's also set to difficult, the hardest difficulty available. Ready? Let's go. Character creation time. I decided to play as a scoundrel, probably the worst idea I could have done, but I wanted persuasion as a class skill. I set his looks to mullet man, obviously, and started allocating attribute points. Dexterity was crucial for defense and for better attack rolls with our pistols. I spread the rest out evenly enough, though I wished I would have put more in constitution for extra vitality points. Skills aren't that important. I gave myself the two weapon fighting feat so I would be better at using two blaster pistols at once. Finally, I named the character Drake on the wheel, as usual, and got ready for a fun time. Right off the bat we meet Trask, a useless character, and do way too many tutorials. This is one of those times when you have to bring a party member with you. Thankfully, I was able to lead Trask away from the enemies, kill them, and continued on my way. This part is pretty simple, and I didn't really have to worry about it too much. Eventually, I arrived at the bridge, and for some reason Trask auto-teleported to me when I opened the door, but I managed to kill the Sith before he got any damage in. For some reason, I never took his blaster away, and I don't know why. After that I leveled up, allocated my skill points, and picked toughness as my feat so I could get a couple extra vitality points per level. Trask then sacrificed himself to fend off a dark Jedi, may he not rest in peace, and I continued onwards trying to find Tarth Onassi. I killed a few more Sith, then used the computer terminal to kill off the Sith waiting for me in the next room. After that I met Karth, and we got into the escape pod and made our way to Terrace, crashing into the planet. I had some wonderful dreams, and eventually woke up to Karth, who I tried my best to ignore, except for the part where we have to find Bastila, the Jedi who was aboard our ship in the beginning of the game. Sadly, I once again have to take a party member with me just for a second, but it's cool. When we leave our safe house, we get stopped by a Sith party who are harassing some aliens. I decided I was going to play on the light side this time, and opted to help them. I made sure to unequip Karth's gear, and actually equipped his special blaster for myself, so thank you very much for that. A grenade chuck and a blaster bolt later, and they were dead. After that I was able to put Karth back into storage, and I took my first serious steps into the challenge. I spent some time looting the apartment complex, stopping to talk to Dia about her bounty, then I made my way topside. I made sure to check out the general shop and buy a permacrete detonator for later too. Now to the cantina close by. Inside I bought a Pazak deck, was invited to go to a party by a pretty female Sith, and pissed off a rich person. I left the cantina and was attacked by the rich person's guards, and surprisingly, I died. I loaded my save and made sure to get the drop on them with a grenade this time. Then I wandered around some more, talked to Zelka Forn about the Rat Ghoul disease serum, and helped a poor old man with his debt problems by killing his collectors and giving him money as well. More apartments, more helping people with debt problems, and even a bit of partying too. While I was there, I stole some Sith armor which I could wear as a disguise to get into the lower cities. I made that my next stop. Once I was down below, I was greeted by outright gang warfare and attacked. I knew this part would suck as I have very shoddy equipment and they do a lot of damage. After a few attempts, I got a couple of lucky grenade throws. Grenades are quite crucial in the early game for this challenge. Whoa, more apartments, who would have guessed? There were plenty of Black Valkers, one of the local gangs, inside the apartment, but more importantly there was this guy who wanted to disappear. I could help him by giving him my Primacrete detonator and staging an explosion to make it look like he died, and then I could go collect his bounty to boot. The last important thing I did in this apartment was open a special lock chest and get the armor I would wear for the beginning half of the challenge, the Akani Fiber Armor. 
I left the apartments and made my way to the Lower City Cantina. I got introduced to Kalo Nord, a bounty hunter, along with Mission and Zalbar, two completely useless characters in this challenge. I did some dancing with the Twi'lek, and turned in what few bounties I could at this point for some credits. After that, I went to the other gang in the area, the Hidden Bex, and asked their leader for help finding Bastila. As it turns out, Bastila was currently a slave and was being offered up to this year's winner of the season opener of Swoop Racing. I asked Gadden if he could help me with this, and he directed me to go to the Black Volker base and steal back the prototype Swoop engine they had, which would almost guarantee a win for me. To get into the base, though, I would need Mission's help, which meant I had to go to the Undercity, which was full of rat ghouls. I'd also need some Sith clearance papers, which Gadden traded me for my Sith armor disguise. I met Candorous Ordo, another useless party member, and checked out the last set of apartments on Terrace. There was some loot there, but I would have to come back later if I wanted the real reward, killing Selvin, an assassin, for the bounty on her head. Undercity time. Not much to say here except I saved Hendar, which took me a stupid amount of effort considering the first Rackle you fight is incredibly difficult for some reason. This is where you start to see me use my main tactic for this challenge, kiting. If I'm moving fast enough, I can get an attack on an enemy and get out of their range before they can attack. Rinse and repeat. Works best in an open area. Immediately after I killed the Rat Ghoul, I was greeted by Mission, who lost her Wookiee friend Zalbar. He was taken into the sewers by Gamorrean slavers. I agreed to help her if she agreed to help me, and just like that, I had to take her with me through the sewers, and couldn't drop her off until we rescued Zalbar and opened up the back gate into the Volker base, as she was the only one who knew how to do it. Great. I decided to wander around the Undercity a while longer. I ran into Candorus again, who helped me kill some Rat Ghouls, then I ran into a Sith patrol and challenged them to a fight since I wanted their gear. There were plenty of Rat Ghouls for me to kill, but since they weren't as hard as the first one, I wasn't complaining. Too much, at least. I finally went into the sewers, made sure Mission stayed far behind me, and turned on solo mode, so she wouldn't follow. To no one's surprise, there were more Rat Ghouls, and after I killed them, I opened a door and got murked by some Gamorreans. Now would be a good time to mention that I'm saving quite often. This game doesn't autosave very much, and when it does, they're pretty far apart. After my failure, I opened a different door first, and was able to repair a droid to keep the Gamorreans occupied while I dealt damage from afar. After that, I found Zalbar in the next room, saved him, and he swore a Wookiee life debt to me, which means that Mission and Zalbar are now a permanent part of the party. Thankfully, I didn't have to take him with me, and I returned to plundering the sewers in search of loot. You might have noticed that I'm not talking about my levels, even though by your count, I've gotta be at least level 5 right now and that's because there's not much of a need to. Most of my skills went into class specifics like persuasion and security, and whatever was left went into treat injury, so my medpacks would be more effective. I also didn't get feats very often since I was playing as a scoundrel, but I was working on two-weapon fighting, and after that it was rapid shot, which would allow me to make an extra attack during my turn, which was very good. After my plundering of the sewers, with Mission's help, I finally entered the next area, then sent her back to the hideout forever. This part of the sewers was smaller, but there were still plenty of Rat Ghouls and Gamorreans to fight. The real kicker here was the Rancor at the end, which I was not actually fighting. Instead, I decided to use what I do best, explosions. I sprayed a grenade down with Io de Renko and stuck it in a nearby pile of bodies. He ate it and promptly died. I triumphantly beat the crap out of its corpse until there was literally nothing left to bury. Then I made my way into the Black Volker base. The Volkers offered me some much welcome respite from the Rat Ghouls and Gamorreans in the sewers. It was especially nice considering I found another droid to repair to distract my enemies while I killed them. There was a lot of notable loot here. I made sure to equip what I could and save any of my extra grenades for an upcoming part. Once I was done in the main area, I made my way to the hangar and was definitely not at all surprised by how much more difficult the enemies could be from one room to the next. Thankfully, I had some frag and sonic grenades. I should mention that at this point, Karth's blaster was almost fully kitted out and was a pretty decent weapon. The true prize here was not the swoop engine I would be getting, but actually a small room with a hard-to-kill droid that had some majorly good equipment. The obvious problem was just how difficult the droid was to kill. It wasn't about his health pool or damage for the most part, it was one of his droid upgrades that let him freeze me in place, over and over and over again. This is mostly just a luck-based fight, and thankfully I was lucky enough to get it done in a few attempts with the help of ion grenades as opposed to 30 minutes with my blaster. My prize? Five plasma grenades, the best grenades I could get for the time being, and a helpful dose of credits. Now it was time to deal with the two enemies guarding the prototype engine. I threw two of my precious plasma grenades to start the battle, finished them off with a couple of frags, and took out the lesser Vulkers with my blaster pistols. I grabbed the engine and went back to Gatton. I was to be the one racing with the prototype, and I was pumped up because I do so love a good swoop race. It was a piece of cake, and I was the winner in no time. Of 
course, Brezhik, the leader of the Black Belkers, and the guy who captured Bastila didn't like that and said I wouldn't be given a prize because I cheated. While yes, technically I did, I didn't really have to worry about it because Bastila freed herself while everyone was occupied. From there, it was pretty much a free-for-all. Thankfully, Bastila's not a member of the party yet, so I didn't have to worry about her fighting anyone. This was fairly easy, and I was awarded with Brezhik's armband, gloves, and one useless Jedi. We reconvened at the base and discussed how we were supposed to get off this planet. Not many ideas, we decided we'd look for a way, and by we, I mean me, myself, and I. As soon as I left the apartment, I was greeted by someone who told me to go talk to Candorus in the lower city cantina. I agreed, and on my way there, I made sure to give Zelka Forn the Rack Cool Serum I picked up in the inner city. In the cantina, Candorus had an idea of how to escape the planet, but I would need to infiltrate the Sith base and get a very nice droid from the shop. So that's what I did. Since I would need all the credits I could get later on, I threatened the owner of the droid shop and got T3M4 for free. I sent him home for the time being in favor of going to the dueling arena for now. As much as I want to go on and on about this part since it's one of my favorites, I'll keep it short. Most of the fights were very easy, except for Marl who always uses melee weapons. After a few attempts, I started kiting him and that proved to be the winning strategy. The champ was easy as long as I had an energy shield active and the final battle with Bendex Starkiller was alright, I suppose. He likes to chuck grenades the second the battle starts and got the drop on me good, but I came back in the end with a mixture of energy shields, attacking, and healing. When he was dead, I left a richer man in money and weapons, as I was given his blaster pistol which is both better than Karth's and upgradable. I made sure to pick up T3 while I was upgrading the blaster and took him to unlock the Sith base which only he could do. After that I sent him home to think about what he did, probably giving him an existential crisis in the process, and went inside. A quick bribe to the receptionist ensured she didn't alert the guards, and it wasn't long before I encountered my first Sith Troopers. I was still at the point where I'm always going to be way underpowered for what I'm trying to do, and it would remain that way for a long time. But as long as I focused on healing and using my energy shields, it wasn't too bad. The awful part was when I had to fight the assault droid. I gave it the good old college try and failed more than I care to admit. I eventually remembered that you could turn off its shield from the computer terminal at the front desk, and that made it easier but it was still a pretty close battle. It only gets worse from here on out though, as in the next area I had to fight a Sith Governor. Fun fact, nothing called a Sith Governor is going to be easy to kill. This part is hard even in a normal playthrough, but it's made worse by the fact I'm using blaster pistols. I had a contingency plan in place already though, and left the base to go buy some plasma mines, 15 of them to be exact since that's the max amount that can be in an area. I laid them all down in a very tight line and went to fight the Governor. He ran towards me, and as it turned out, I didn't need that many mines. I made sure to loot what I needed and grabbed the Sith codes we would need to escape the planet. Back to Candorus, and it was time for a cutscene featuring Darth Malak, the main antagonist, commanding his troops to destroy Terrace. Lovely. Candorus took me to Davik Kang, a crime lord, and it was time to make our great escape by stealing Davik's ship, the Ebonhawk. Easy peasy. Sort of. The Sith started bombing the planet, and Davik had the same idea as us, and he had Kalo Nord with him as well. Sadly, I was stuck with Candorus as he needed to come with me to Davix, but he can't actually damage these two at all, so it's okay. I always have trouble with this fight in some way, shape, or form, but it's so much harder when it's just you. After Candorus dies, they both start shooting at me, and that's pretty much it for the fight. Now, there is something that's always nice to know about this part. The only one you have to actually fight is Kalo Nord, and you don't even have to kill him. You just have to get him to half health, and then a cutscene plays. That is a much easier prospect than killing them both. After that, we boarded the ship and set our sights to Dantooine, where the Jedi Academy was located. Exposition time. There's a lot more to this story than this, and I'm not going to get into all of it because you should probably go play this game yourself if you haven't, and I don't want to spoil it too bad. TLDR, the Jedi need help fighting the Sith, so they decide to train me, even though I'm an adult, and they make me do all of this stuff for them. Yay. So I'm a Jedi now, or at least an apprentice, I guess. I learn the Jedi Code and make an incredibly useless lightsaber. Sometime later, I can finally go explore the surface of Dantooine while also searching for the Tainted Grove I must cleanse as my last trial. I run into some interesting people, like a woman who clearly has the hots for a missing droid, and a salesman who has nothing of particular interest. The fields of Dantooine are not a safe place to wander. There are a crap ton of cathounds everywhere you go, and a few Mandalorians to boot. As I said before, I am nowhere near being able to take it easy during a fight, as I'm still incredibly weak. I eventually stumbled upon the grove and was greeted by a fallen Jedi. Of course, since I'm still made of paper, I take a lot of damage, and I'm also pretty susceptible to force powers as well. I tried going for the tried and true mind method, but that didn't work. Eventually, I got a lucky concussion grenade hit, and that made the fight much, much easier. 
I convinced Juhani to go back to the academy and seek forgiveness and all that good stuff, and continued looking through the fields. I came across a murder investigation, helped solve it, and eventually I made it to the Crystal Cavern, which would be a good source of income since I can't use the crystals for lightsabers anyways. The Kinrath inside were disposed of easily, and I spent the next two minutes cracking open their eggs to get red lightsaber crystals. More Cathounds showed up on the way back to the academy, but they were getting a bit easier. Back home, I talked with the Masters about Juhani, the Fallen Jedi, and then was instructed to go to the ruins not far from there and figure out what Malak and his old Master Revan had been up to before they fell to the dark side. Of course, I had to take Bastila with me, so that's just PG. I also traded out my armor for the Jedi robes I was given so I could use Night Speed, which would be handy during battle. Of course, I left Bastila at the entrance to every area we entered so she couldn't fight anyone. I stopped along the way and did some side quests, like killing the rest of the Mandalorian raiders and their leader, which netted me some good loot, or helping the local families figure out their disputes. When I finally made it to the ruins, I was greeted by a droid who spoke in riddles about what this place was, and I was tasked with defeating the two droids in the opposite rooms. This was a huge pain in the ass since they had good shields and could freeze me or burn me, but anything is possible if you just force your way through with medpacks. My reward for all this was a piece of the star map, which when completed would lead me to the Star Forge. That was what helped Revan and Malak on their path to the dark side, and we needed to destroy it because free will is overrated. So now it was time to go on a magical journey to the four planets where the star maps were located, and use them to figure out where the forge was. I was also instructed to take Juhani with me, which would just take up space in my ship, but oh well, I have to. We chose a destination which was Yavin, and we were greeted by a cutscene that strongly implies Kalo Nord is still alive, because he is, and was contracted by Malak to kill me. Yavin is not actually one of the planets we need to go to, it just has a spaceport with a shop, a shop that has some of the best items in the game. I sold everything that I didn't need, which was a lot, and bought myself a pair of advanced stabilizer gloves, which net me 3 decks, and an advanced sensory implant, which when I could use would grant me 10 extra awareness and 2 extra decks. I would come back to Yavin later, as he gets better items as you progress through the game, but for now it was time to go to Tatooine, my favorite planet in the game. Well, when I'm normally playing at least. I usually come here last so I can enjoy it before the end of the game, but when I tried to do this challenge last time with my buddy Hunter, we made a horrible choice to go to Tatooine last, and it was actually the worst thing ever, imagine that. I figure if I get it out of the way now, the rest of the game wouldn't seem so tough, and for the most part I was right. Thankfully, I didn't need to take anyone with me this time, and so I left the ship to do some exploring. I purchased some advanced medpacks with what little money I had left, and was also gifted a crate of Gizga, a cute lizard-like animal, against my own will. There was a lot to do in Tatooine before I made my way into the desert. I met some of the townsfolk, mainly hunters. I played some Bazak and lost because I hadn't built a decent deck yet, and I even got a hunting license from the Zerka Corporation. In exchange for the license, I would have to cull the Sand People population, the game's choice of words not mine, and bring back the leader's gaffy stick as proof. I would also get paid for other gaffy sticks I brought in, so that was a bonus. I made sure to stop at the swoop races and become the champion of this circuit, which awarded me with plenty of credits. Once I left Swoop Ambition though, I was in for a treat. Three Dark Jedi just waiting to kill little old me. This was not easy in the slightest, and I was only able to beat them by exploiting the game's AI mechanics. Sometimes they just wouldn't go after me if I hid behind the corner, and I was able to bring them to me one by one. In the end, it worked well enough, I suppose. With everything inside of the walls done, I could make my way into the Dune Sea, where I knew I was in for a heap of trouble. For as much as I love Tatooine, it has one flaw. The absolutely ridiculous amount of sand people you have to fight while wandering around. They aren't even spread out in the map for the most part, they just randomly spawn in from nowhere and make your life a living hell. They do a lot of damage and have a decent health pool. This is where I started kiting enemies almost exclusively. I just didn't have the proper supplies to best them normally. It's not even a good feeling when you kill a group of sand people, as in a few minutes there's another group of them coming to make weird noises at you. The Dune Sea also happens to be quite large, so you're bound to be constantly fighting. Hooray for me. In what spare time I had, I helped free a man from his defunct droids, then made my way to a sand curl to help the miners, who were immediately killed by sand people, imagine that. I had to fight three groups of four sand people a piece. It took 15 actual real life minutes. It made me big sad. After that, I came across a few Gamorreans who set a trap for me, but after that 15 minute long battle earlier, I wasn't about to be phased by less. I suppose it's a good time to talk about level. I hit level 12 and was able to put an attribute point in the decks. I was now at 19 base. These are my current skills, and I was finally able to get heal, the upgraded form of cure which is one of the most handy force powers in the game. After wandering around the desert some more, I eventually got myself into another bad situation. This time it involved desert raids. 
Kiting them worked well, but after the battle, I was left with very little healing supplies and had to make a trip back to the store. Of course, when I transited back to the desert, I was attacked by more sand people and raids that had apparently spawned in, causing another 15 minute fight. I eventually came across the entrance to the sand people territory, but had to kill a large group of them to actually gain admittance, which was, as you imagined, not an easy task. Once inside, I changed into my sand people cosplay to disguise myself and made my way to the enclave. Of course, as soon as I was inside, they saw right through my cheap costume and I had to start throwing hands. There's a lot less room to kite in this area, which made it all the more difficult, but the more of them I killed, the more space I made for kiting, so it was getting easier and easier with each successive crime. I freed some Jawas from their imprisonment and eventually found myself at the door to the Sand People's Chieftain. Since the whole area is one big circle, I was able to kite everyone here, so it wasn't a very hard fight. Now I had the Chieftain's Gaffy Stick and could make my way back to the Zerka Corporation. I was paid a handsome fee for the stick, along with all the other sticks I had as well. After that, I spoke with a Jawa that gave me the mission to free his compatriots from the Sand People, and he kindly informed me of where the star map was. Unfortunately, that was smack dab in the middle of a cry at Dragon's Cave. And from there, it was time for the epic finale of Tatooine. I made my way back into the Dune Sea one last time and headed east. Here I was greeted by a hunter named Komad. Komad was also here to kill Cry Dragon, though in an unconventional way. His plan was to lure the dragon outside of its den by placing a herd of Bantha in front of it. The dragon, presumably hungry because it's a dragon, would then walk out of the cave and be obliterated by the minefield we laid in advanced. My job was to lure the Banthas over to the cave. It couldn't be easy though, could it? Naturally, Banthas are looked upon as holy creatures by the Sand People, for lore reasons I assume, and while I was hurting them up I was attacked by a large group of elite Sand People. Thankfully, none of them used melee weapons, so energy shields were very effective, and it didn't turn out as bad as I thought. Once the Bantha were in place, right on cue the Cryot Dragon took one step out of its cave to investigate the commotion and was promptly blown to smithereens. With the dragon dead, I could go into its cave, loot the rubble and corpses within, and reveal the star map. That's pretty much it for Tatooine, except for the last fight. No matter what you do, Kalo Nord always shows up on the first planet you visit as soon as you find the star map, so I was in for a good time. After a few failed attempts, I got lucky and was able to kill Kalo's compatriots easily enough, which gave me plenty of time to deal with Kalo himself. With that done, I could leave Tatooine and go on to the next planet, Kashyyyk. Though that's going to have to wait for part 2 of this video, as there's still a lot of the game left to play. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a like and subscribe, it helps me out bunches. Also, check out the Discord and Patreon, I have links to them in the description. A special thanks to my patrons Dr. Maritimus, Braden Watson, Riley Anderson, and Anonymous. Y'all are the best. Thanks to Six, completely ignorant rat in a trench coat for helping me write this script. They live under a rock and have no idea what this whole Star Wars thing is about and nearly had an aneurysm trying to spell these crazy names. And until next time, stay safe out there, and peace out.